Taipusam is marked by elaborate processions, rituals and acts of devotion including the carrying of kavadis, ornate structures and various forms of penance. Murugan's mythology is replete with tales of his heroic deeds and divine interventions. So with this instrument or this with this weapon of a spear, he got the fame of being the greatest warrior ever. Fought across the subcontinent, it is said he went beyond the present borders of what we call as Bharat. Then he realized that somewhere deep inside, the fury of who he was is seeking revenge. Today is referred to as uh, Taipusam in the Tamil culture, which is considered to be the most effervescent of the various spiritual events that this culture is full of. Literally, every day of the 365 days are marked for different aspects of life. But this day, which is uh, the first Pardami or the full moon day, post solstice after Sankaranti, the first Full moon day is called as Taipusam. Largely in the country, in the larger part of the country, it is known as the Dhanya Pavnami. Dhanya means uh, it is a full, full moon of fulfillment. In many ways, because of the nature of what happens on this planet in relationship with the sun, this is considered to be the most generous full moon of the year. When I say generous, one who knows how to get the best out of life, one who is seeing how to make this life in the best possible way, one will attain to maximum amount of… or one will reap maximum harvest at this time, so it's called as Dhanya Pavnami, the full moon of fulfillment. The moon has already come up in a glorious way. <sighs> there are many things connected with this. This is considered also in southern India largely, for ages. People always saw this as a day to develop instruments of victory. That which brings you victory, success in material world, in the emotional world and in the spiritual world. This is the day when one haunts their instruments which will bring success or victory in these different dimensions. The legend goes out to say that it is on this day that Parvati gave the… the whale or the spear to Skanda, who is known as Muruga in the south. He is Skanda, he is Kumara, he is Subramanya and he is Muruga, different geographies called him differently, but started as Skanda. 
So with this instrument or this… with this weapon of a spear, he got the fame of being the greatest warrior ever. Fought across the subcontinent, it is said he went beyond the present borders of what we call as Bharat, because his name reverberated in the Persian culture as Iskandar went further north up into Central Asia and become Iskandar. And even today the word slightly mispronounced is used as Sikandar, somebody who is victorious over everybody, who becomes an emperor of all the rulers, but never held a kingdom. He only fought battles because he was committed to annihilating injustice. The boy was angry <laughs> and uh, when somebody of immense capabilities and hugely blessed becomes angry, <laughs> so it happened and uh, wherever he thought there is injustice, he started killing. Well. Literally, his adolescence and youth, as a youth, he largely killed people. We don't know how many, but across the subcontinent he did and he also went slightly out. Then he realized, what is justice and what is injustice he is not always an absolute. It's a question of perspective most of the time. Then he realized that somewhere deep inside, the fury of who he was is seeking revenge in the form of justice. When you go after somebody thinking you will serve justice, they will only experience it as revenge. So I'm not trying to say there is no justice at all, but there isn't. <laughs> the world, human life always balances between we work for either the larger good of the people or larger harm to the people. Never in the history of humanity have we achieved that kind of a thing where there was absolute justice. We've only talked about it. We never have mani managed to manifest it. In small societies, you may. But as the size grows, it only becomes about larger well-being. Larger well-being will always be perceived by a certain group of people as injustice to them. Endlessly, in every society, in every little place, this is going on even within a home where there are four or five people. Somebody will always be feeling there is injustice towards them however you do it, because there is no absolute definition of what is justice. The largest well-being that we can serve even a given group of people is the only justice we have managed till now. When he realized this, he washed his sword and his spear, spear and went up the mountain and left his body because he knew he was fighting for a goal which is not just elusive, which is elusive. Having said that, only if you realize this in your life, that life is not a bundle of absolutes, then there is possibility of fulfillment. Then you will ask, Sadhguru, are you saying only corrupt people will find fulfillment? That is the human struggle. When you employ 
one dimension of intelligence. That dimension of intelligence which we consider as intellect always looks for straight lines. When it does not find straight lines in any aspect of life, it will feel it's unjust. Another level of intelligence which is not within the straight lines, which cannot be bound within straight lines, feels perfectly comfortable with small discrepancies. It is okay with the order that we see in a forest. But a logical mind will seek a manicured garden everywhere and will be disappointed because manicured gar garden is only possible in small patches, never possible as a global phenomena. So that is Skanda's story, but he got his weapon of instrument according to the legend on this day. That is why he was so successful in his mission. Well, ultimately he came to realization that his mission was not right, but that is also considered victory in this culture. Anywhere else he would be rated as a failure because he failed in his mission. But in this culture, which is not of straight lines, we see this as a success because he realized in his activity in the world he failed, but he realized we hold that, we hold that as the greatest success, not material things. If he had listed this many victories and if his mission was complete, only then an intellectually constipated society would consider him a success. But here, he failed, absolutely failed in his mission, but he is a success for us. All over southern India, we worship the boy more than his father. <laughs> Today, everybody is at the Muruga temple <laughs> Because realization, which is not confined within the… within the definitions of human logic is considered the highest success. On this day, twenty-four years ago, one among us, one of us, became victorious in her journey. It was a loss for all of us, particularly for me and my girl, it was a big loss. But we still consider it a success, this is our problem. A massive loss, but because it was a success for that life, that life, any life for that matter, a life doesn't belong to anybody. As body, we may say this is parented by these people, this is married to this person or that person, or born to this person or that person, or fathered or mothered this person or that person. But as a life, we don't belong to anybody. As a body, we belong to somebody maybe, but as a life, we don't belong to anybody. So in that context, it has been one of the greatest victories that has happened here, though it was a great loss for us. Murugan, also known as Kartikeya, Skanda, Subramanya and by various other names, is a prominent deity in Hinduism, particularly revered in South India and among Tamil-speaking communities. The rich tapestry of myths, legends, rituals and symbolism surrounding Murugan portrays him as a multifaceted and revered figure in Hindu cosmology. According to Hindu mythology, Murugan is the son of Lord Shiva, one of the principal deities of Hinduism and the goddess Parvati. He is often depicted as a youthful and handsome god with six faces and twelve hands, representing his immense power and wisdom. Murugan is typically portrayed riding a peacock, his mount, Vahana, symbolizing grace, beauty and agility. 
The origin of Murgan is deeply rooted in mythology. Legend has it that he was born with the purpose of defeating the demon Taraka, who could only be vanquished by a son of Shiva. Therefore, Murgan embodies the divine purpose of destroying evil forces and restoring cosmic balance. Murgan is associated with a myriad of attributes symbolizing various aspects of human life and spirituality. He is often revered as a god of war, embodying courage, valor, and righteous anger. However, he is not merely a marital deity. Murgan is also worshipped as a patron of youth, wisdom, education, and protection. Devotees seek his blessings for success, prosperity, and spiritual enlightenment. Throughout South India, there are numerous temples dedicated to Murgan, each with its own unique significance and mythology. Among the most famous are the Arupade Vida, six abodes, temples in Tamil Nadu, which are associated with Murgan's divine exploits and victories over demons. These temples serve as important pilgrimage sites and centers of devotion for millions of devotees. One of the most significant festivals dedicated to Murgan is Thai Pusam, celebrated with great favor by Tamil communities worldwide. This festival, which usually falls in the Tamil month of Thai, January or February, commemorates the occasion when Parvati gave Murugan the spear, vanquished the divan Surapadman. Thai Pusam is marked by elaborate processions, rituals and acts of devotion, including the carrying of Kavadis, ornate structures and various forms of penance. Murugan's mythology is replete with tales of his heroic deeds and divine interventions. He is revered for his victory over the demon Surapadman, his role in vanquishing the demon Taraka and his acquisition of the spear from his mother Parvati. The spear symbolizing divine wisdom and power is regarded as a potent weapon against ignorance and evil forces. While Murugan is predominantly worshipped in South India, his veneration extends beyond regional boundaries. In other parts of India and in Sri Lanka where he is known as Kanda, Murugan holds a significant place in the religious and cultural landscape. Each region may have its own variations in the way Murgan is worshipped, depicted and celebrated, reflecting the diverse tapestry of Hindu traditions. Devotees invoke Murgan's blessings through various means, including the chanting of mantras dedicated to him. Among these, the Skanda Shashti Kavacham and the Kanda Shashti Kavacham are particularly popular, believed to confer protection and guidance to the devotee. Beyond his religious significance, Murgan holds cultural importance, especially in Tamil literature, classical dance and music. He is a central figure in classical Tamil poetry known as Sangam literature where he is celebrated as the epitome of valor, beauty and divine grace. In conclusion, Murgan stands as a revered and multifaceted deity in Hindu mythology embodying virtues such as courage, wisdom and protection. His worship is deeply ingrained in the cultural and religious fabric of South India, inspiring millions of devotees to seek his blessings for spiritual fulfillment and worldly success. Through his myths, legends, rituals and symbols, Murgan continues to captivate the hearts and minds of believers, transcending regional boundaries to emerge as a universal symbol of divine grace and triumph over adversity.